So today we will be discussing about the 8086 microprocessor. Till now we have discussed uh, everything related with the 8085. Now today we are going to start the 8086 microprocessor. Now this 8086 microprocessor also belong to the family of Intel. And after the 8085, they have developed another processor, which is a 16-bit processor. The 8086 and other families of the Intel processor are also 16-bit are also processor. Uh, after 8086, they come with 80186 and 80286. All these processors are 16-bit uh, processor. So whenever we say that a processor is an 8-bit processor or processor is a 16-bit processor, it automatically means that the internal architecture designed for the processor contains 16 data lines. So whenever the bit number of bit which is configured along with the name of the processor, it automatically signifies that all the operations which are being performed by the processor, the, the data lines available for transferring the data, the internal registers, the size of the instructions, the, the size, word size, everything is of 16 bit. So let us first discuss about the features of 16-bit processor, that's 8086. If I say that it is a 16-bit processor, it means the arithmetic and the logic unit, its internal registers, which are used to store temporarily the data as well as the addresses, the instructions, the data bus, everything is of 16 bit now the 8086 has been devised after the 8085 just because of many reasons we have seen that in 8085 we have a lot of restrictions because the limitation and the size, word size that is 8 bit. Even though in 8085, we have tried our level best to make it the addressing capacity of 8085 as 16 bit so that it can access 2 to the power 16, that is roughly around 64 kilobyte of the memory at a time. But this is restricted. You cannot go beyond 64 kilobyte because the maximum addressing capacity is 2 to the power 16. The second thing related with the 8085 as far as the restrictions are concerned, the instructions are limited in number because every instruction is represented by 8 bit. So maximum number of the instruction which we can allot is two to the power eight. And that is why we don't have any multiplication instruction which can do multiplication and the divisor. And for that particular purpose in 8085, we have to write a program. Instead of using a single instruction, we have to write a program for doing the multiplication as well as the PBC. So 8086 has been devised to enhance the capacity of addressing so that besides 64 kilobyte, it will, it should be able to access more and more memory. Because if any microprocessor is able to access 
more memory, it is more capable. And for this reason, the 8086 uses 20-bit address. So it means there are 20 lines through which the address addresses are being sent from the processor to the memory. And so if the address bit size address bus is of 20 bit, it is able to directly access two to the power 20. Whenever I say two to the power 20, it is coming around one megabyte of the memory locations. Of course, the memory which will be used in the microprocessor will be used with the microprocessor will be made up of registers similar to the memory which we are using with the 8085. And the registers of the individual memory locations are able to store only eight bit information. So it means if we have to store 16 bit word in the memory, we are in requirement of two consecutive memory locations. So the first feature, important feature of 8086, that is a 16 bit processor. The second important feature is it uses 20 bit address. Now this 20 bit address, the, whatever is being generated by the processor for accessing the memory or the input output devices is normally it is the manipulated address. And with the help of two 16-bit addresses, we try to frame the 20-bit address. Because if we are using any memory location, the address of any memory location by 20-bit, we must have at least a register which can store 20-bit. But in 8086, we don't use any register which can store 20-bit. And for that particular purpose, we used to use two 16-bit registers to obtain a 20-bit address. And how it is being done, we will discuss it later on. The third important feature is, since we are using 16-bit address, so it is able to generate 16-bit input-output addresses, so it is capable of accessing two to the power 16 means 64,000 ports. In case of 8085, it was two to the power eight, that is 256 ports. So number of ports can be increased for accessing different input and output devices. The fourth feature of 8086 that it uses multiplexed address in the database as we used to use in 8085 also. In 8085, we have eight bit address lines and eight bit data lines. And we mul multiplex this eight bit address lines along with the data lines to combine in combination, it becomes 16 bit. And these 16 lines will be used to carry the addresses. In case of 8086, we also use multiplex address in the data lines. The size of the data bus is 16 bit. And the same bus at a time is used to carry the address. And later on, the same bus is used to carry the data. As I told you that it is using 20 bit address. So how this four, ad four bit address will be coming because 16 bit address lines, 16 bit lines are available in the form of a data lines. And the same data lines are used for the address bus at a particular time. So four lines are also used in multiplex in connection with the status lines, control lines. So whatever addresses and the data buses, so addresses which are being generated in the form of 20 bit bus, it will be using 16 bit of the data lines and four bit of the status lines to combine together becomes 20 bit address lines. It works on five megahertz clock cycle. 
since the frequency of the clock cycle is increased, so time period is reduced in comparison to 2.5 or 3 megahertz in case of 8085. So time period is less, it means it is able to do certain operation in lesser time. In 8086 is also having capability to perform the bit operation, byte operation, word operation, block operation, and it is also able to perform the division and the multiplication because division is an instruction which is included in the instruction set of 8086 along with the multiplication. So it performs, it is capable of performing bit means the serial data in the form of a byte means the eight bit in the form of a word that is 16 bit or even in the form of a block operation, it may be 32 bit or 64 bit, it can do. Now, 8086 operates in two modes. One is called maximum mode and another is called minimum mode. Normally it performs its operation in the minimum mode, but whenever it is used in the multiprocessor fashion, it means there are many processors which are attached together in that case, it is working in the maximum mode. So the difference between maximum and the minimum mode in which it operates, maximum mode is used when it is working in the multiprocessor mode, multiprocessor. It is also capable of supporting the multiprogramming. And multiprogramming, you know, it is a time multiplex fashion. It means it is capable of the processor is capable of doing multi-programming at the same time in time multiplex fashion. For example, what is the time multiplex fashion or what is the meaning of multi-programming? There will be one processor which will be available and there may be possible that there are many users along with the console unit. Console unit contains only monitor and the keyboard and the mouse. And suppose there are four users who are performing, who are using the same CPU, which contains the 8086 microprocessor. It is possible. So how it works in a time multiplex fashion? There are four users who are using the same central processing unit having 8086. So what happened, user number one, it allots, the processor allots time to the individual user. First 15 seconds, it will perform the operation of the first user. Next 15 seconds, it will perform the operation of the second user. Next 15 seconds, it will perform the operation of third user. And next 15 seconds, it performs the operation of the fourth user. And later on, next 15 seconds, it, it again performs the operation of user number one and then two, then three. So it divides its time of doing the processing part as far as the different users are concerned. So that is why it is it can also work in the multi-programming or time multiplex fashion. It uses Q to speed up the execution. The architecture of 8086 has been designed in such a manner that besides being its capability, it is able to speed up the execution. And for speeding up this execution, it uses Q. You might have studied Q in uh, data structure. So what it used to do, you have seen in 8085, how the speed up execution process is going to take place. In 8085, you have seen that whenever there is an opcode fetch operation, which requires four T states, three T states are consumed by the processor while accessing, while fetching the information. And in only one T state, it executes the instruction. 
So meaning thereby most of the time of the processor remain ideal. It sits ideal because whenever it has to execute any instruction, it has to fetch the instruction. And fetching of the instruction, if it takes 4T cycle to execute it, 3T states are consumed only in fetching the instruction. So in 8086, in 8086, this problem is solved by using Q. And how it is being done? The instructions are prefetched into the queue and it is stored in the queue. And processor has not to bother that whenever it fetches first instruction, then executes it, then it fetches the second instruction in case of 8085, then it executes it, then it fetches the third instruction, fetches and it executes it. So it is not the case in, in case of 8086. What happens in 8086? The instructions are already prefetched and, and placed in the queue. And what processor has to do? Take the instruction one by one from the queue and execute it. Meaning thereby, the operation of 8086 has been divided into two parts. One unit has the role of fetching the instruction and put it in the queue. And second unit has the function to execute, take the instruction from the queue and execute. So in this way, by using queue, it is able to speed up the execution process. And last but not the least, it uses 14 16-bit registers in comparison to 8085, which has less number of the registers. It uses 14 registers and each register is of 16-bit. It means it can store 16-bit number. So these are the certain features of 8086 microprocessor. This is the architecture or the functional block diagram of 8086. And as I told you, the total architecture is being divided into two parts. The first part is known as BIU and the second part is known as EU. BIU stands for bus interface unit and EU stands for execution unit. The purpose of bus interface unit is to interface with the memory as well as with the input output devices. Just to fetch the information and put it in the queue. And the role of execution in a unit is to take the instructions which are available in the queue one by one and executes it. So as far as the bus interface unit is concerned, it contains certain registers. It contains the address summer. Address summer means it's, it's a kind of a logical device which used to add the addresses to generate a 20-bit address. It uses control bus. It uses queue. So this register unit, which is actually called segment register and the instruction pointer, it is the part of BIU, bus interface unit. The address summer is also a part of bus interface unit along with the queue. So to, this interface unit contains three parts, queue, segment registers, as well as the address summer. And the sole purpose of bus interface unit is to interface with the memory and the input output devices to either to take the data, either to receive the data or to receive the instruction from the, which is available from the memory. So as discussed, it has two functional units and 
the working of these two functional unit is simultaneously it is not dependent these units are independent and these units have been made independent just to increase the system speed as well as throughput the meaning of throughput is instruction execution per unit time so instructions are placed in this queue prefetched from the memory and put it in the queue the role of bus interface unit is to interface with the memory and the input output device to take the instruction or the data and put it in the queue so we have two units and these two units are independent what do you mean by independent bus interface unit works its own and execution unit works its own it is not dependent of course bus interface unit is going to provide help to the execution unit by taking the information from the queue instead of fetching the information what happens in the case of 8086 we have only one unit and the role of that 8085 is to fetch the information put it in the execution unit decode it and then execute it but in this case in case of 8086 the functionality has been divided the one the role of bus interface unit is to fetch the information and the role of execution unit is to only execute the information so what is the role of bus interface unit it is going to interface to the outside world outside world means it is going to interface with the memory with the input output devices and it is responsible for all external operations for fetching the information for writing the information to the outside world now how it is going to interface the outside world either it will be reading something from the outside world or it is writing something so whatever external operations which is being performed it is the duty of bus interface unit to do it so what is the role it used to send the addresses because until unless the address is not sent you are not able to receive the data or you are not able to store the data second role is to fetch the instruction from the memory as well as data from the memory or from the input output port and third supports instruction queue and address relocation facility address relocation facility means if it if the processor has to change the sequence of the program then instead of executing the next instruction it has to execute some other instruction which is placed somewhere else in the memory so this relocation of addressing is also done with the bus interface unit and it uses queue and in this queue there are six instruction which can be placed at a time so six instruction bytes are fetched ahead of the time and you know the functionality of queue it is based on first in first out it means whatever instruction is fetched first it will be taken out first executed first so all these operations are performed by bus interface unit now let us discuss about the execution unit this execution unit works in parallel with the bus interface unit it is not dependent it is independent bus interface unit used to do its work whenever it gets time it fetches but execution unit works in parallel once it starts it takes the information from the queue and it starts execution so the role of execution unit is to execute the instruction second role is to provide address to the bus interface unit for fetching the data in the instruction it is the execution unit unit who will be informing who will be giving the information to the bus interface unit that which memory has to be fetched or which input device has to be fetched or which input device is to be fetched which output device is to be fetched for uh, writing the data so the reading and the writing of the data is being done by bus interface unit but it is the duty of the instruction unit is execution unit is to provide the address from where it will be going to fetch either the data or the instruction as the major role 
of the execution unit is to manipulate various registers because it has a lot of registers available. We have AH, AL, BH, BL, CH, CL, DH, DL, SP, stack pointer, base pointer, source index, destination index. Along with that, it has control unit. It has arithmetic and the logic unit. It has flag register. So all the execution part is being done with this unit. Now the function, functional unit contains, the different function unit contains, it contains the control circuits as well as the instruction decoders. Control circuit are those logical circuits which is able to generate proper signals, control signal for the proper operation of each and every supporting devices which are available within the system when it has to fetch, what it has to fetch, what kind of uh, in, uh, control signal has to be generated, read signal, write signal, interrupt signal, whatever it may be. An instruction decoder is working in the same way as 8085, whenever data instruction is available. In the instruction register, first it is being decoded to understand that what operation it has to perform. And for this purpose, it uses the instruction decoder. Along with that, it is also having arithmetic and the logic unit. It is having flag register. It is having general purpose register. It is having stack pointer and other pointers as well as the index registers. So this is the functional block diagram of 8086. Now, what is the purpose of the queue? The sole and the important purpose of the queue to, is to speed up the program execution. Processor has not to wait for fetching off, then it has to execute because without fetching, it cannot execute. So what is, has been done? It's a, it's, a, it's a kind of a relay race in which the baton is being handed over by one racer to another. So what is being done? So BIU is going to fetch the instruction for the execution unit to execute. So all the prefetch instruction are held in the, in the queue for the execution unit. And the execution unit takes the instruction one by one from the queue. It simultaneously work is done. That is fetching is done as well as executing is done. How it is possible? Suppose there are two instructions which are available in the queue. So what will happen? The execution unit will take the first one and execute. While it is executing the first instruction which is available in the queue, the bus interface unit is free. It used to fetch the other instructions and put it in the queue and the four in the third place or fourth place, fifth place and sixth place. And as soon as the queue is being empty by the execution unit, by executing it, it again fetches and fills the queue. So queue is always filled for execution of the individual instruction for the execution unit. So the work is being done simultaneously. And what work is done? Fetching as well as executing independently. Yes, of course, we have some problem whenever we have a jump or the call instruction. Then what will happen? What has happened? Suppose there are six instructions are already placed in the queue. And while executing the second instruction, the execution unit came to know that it is a jump instruction. Whenever it is a jump instruction, it means it has not to execute the third value which is available in the queue, but it has to execute other memory location instruction. So what it will do? It will send this information to the bus interface unit. So what this bus interface unit will do, whatever instructions which are being prefetched in the queue is dumped in the memory in the stack. And then it starts fetching that particular instruction, that memory, which is uh, located with the jump instruction. 
whose address is given along with the jump instruction. So, except in the case of jump and call, where the queue is being dumped, and once the functionality is over, it is reloaded into the queue. Now, the process of fetching and executing simultaneously is known as pipelining. So, it means 8086 is using a method which is called pipelining. Because pipelining says that fetching the next instruction while the current instruction is under the execution, it is called pipelining. Like pipelining, you see, uh, the name has been devised by, by water supply. Meaning thereby, if you open the tap, you will continuously, you will be getting the water until unless the source of the water is full of water. So it is already loaded into the pipes and the line has been framed and that is why it is called pipelining. So instructions are put in the queue in the form of a pipeline so that one instruction, second instruction, third instruction is being taken and being executed simultaneously. And meanwhile, while it is executing any instruction, the bus interface unit will be filling the queue from the top because it works in the fashion first in and first out. Now, the register organization of 8086. Now, five kinds of registers are used in 8086. The first one is general purpose register. Second one is pointer and the index register. Third one is segment registers, instruction pointer, and status flag. So I'm starting from the bottom side. The the status flag is very much similar to the flags which we used to use in the 8085 also. And the purpose of using the flag is to show the status of the result after doing any arithmetic in the logic operation. Since in 8085 we have, it is an 8-bit register, so size of the flag is also 8-bit. And out of that, only five bits are used. But since 8086 is a 16 bit register, so the size of the flag is also 16 bit. And out of that 16 bit, we use all those five flags which we used to use in the 8085. And besides that, we use four more flags. So total number of the flags which are used in 8086 are nine, and the rest of the bits remain unused. So it is a 16 bit register in case of. Instruction pointer is very much similar to the program counter in 8085. 8086 uses the name of the program counter is changed and it becomes instruction pointer. And the purpose is to point, is to give the address of the next instruction to be fetched. And since it provides the instruction, next instruction to be fetched, that is why the instruction pointer is a part of bus interface unit. Remember, because it provides the address of the next instruction. And a status flag is a part of execution unit because the purpose of execution unit is to execute. So whatever arithmetic and the logic operation is being done, it is done in the execution unit. So a status flag is a part of execution unit. The next register which is used is general purpose register. And we have four general purpose registers, AX, BX, CX, DX, where AX is an accumulator and BX, CX, DX. All these registers are 16-bit registers, which can be further divided into eight bits and signified as AHAL means A higher, A lower, B higher, B lower, C higher, C lower, and D higher and D lower. And the purpose of these registers is to store the general information into these registers. So that is why it is called general purpose registers. The other category of the register is pointer and the index register. We have four pointer in the index register. One is stack pointer, base pointer, source index, and the destination index. And the purpose of these register is to give the address, provide the address, of the individual memory location 
where the information is being stored. Stack pointer works very similarly as in the case of 8085. The purpose of a stack pointer is to give the address of that memory location, which will be used as a stack. Similarly, base pointer, source index, and destination index, these are the three registers, all 16-bit registers, are also used to signify or dignify or the addresses of the memory. And then we have us another uh, register, which is called segment register, and we have four segment registers, code segment, data segment, stack segment, and the extra segment. And all these registers are 16-bit registers. That's all.